Hello, how are you doing? Welcome back to the channel and a very Merry Christmas. It's been about a week or so since I last did a video. I'm here in Australia visiting family. I hope you've had a brilliant festive period over the last week or so and I'm getting back on it in this video and we're talking about Steve Borthwick and his to-do list as the new England rugby head coach after he replaced Eddie Jones. Had a, a little over a week now to reflect upon his appointment so what's the top of the priority list for him? Remember if you are new here please do subscribe to the channel always massively appreciate that. Drop a comment down below what do you make of any of the points I go through in the video and also what you think is the most important things for Steve Borthwick to get right to focus on in in the first few months in the job and also like the video as well always massively appreciate that all right let's get into it so there are quite a few different things we could talk about in this video I'm going to talk about the coaching team about selection about the style of play but actually the first thing I think to mention here is clarity England only have a couple of months until the start of the Six Nations, which at this moment in time still feels like a decent amount of time, but that is going to go by in a flash, particularly once we get into the new year. And a lot of the players who have been asked in the press about what it's like to work with Steve Borthwick, the thing that comes across consistently, I think, from what I've seen, is the clarity of messaging that he brings to his job. That's what he brought to Leicester Tigers. It's what he brought to Japan and to England in terms of his roles as an assistant coach. And I think that's going to be absolutely crucial for him to bring that with England for a team that feels muddled in terms of selection, in terms of style of play, in terms of the whole feel around this England team. It's been muddled for a little while. While clarity is going to be absolutely key. The 4th of February is the opening game of the Six Nations. I think it's going to be really important for him to have that clarity in terms of what he wants from his team heading into that game so they can kick on into the rest of 2023, which is a big, big year with, of course, the World Cup in France as well. So how does he want his team to play in terms of his selection? What's he going to go down? That is going to be fascinating. I'm going to get onto that in a bit more detail a little bit later in the video, but a massive frustration amongst a lot of England fans, a lot of comments I've seen on this channel in terms of Eddie Jones and towards the end of his tenure always revolved around selection. So that's going to be fascinating. Everything needs to be clear because I still think this England squad should be a lot better than they currently are. And that's not an assumption. That's not that they have the right or they should always be there. Of course, you have to earn it. But I just think based upon what we've seen, we should see more from this England team. OK, also clarity is going to be needed in terms of his coaching team. We've seen Kevin Sinfield bring, uh, come across with him from Leicester. Sinfield done an unbelievable job at Leicester Tigers in terms of the defence work. That was a, a pillar of their march towards a premiership title this year. So he's going to be key. I'm excited to see him in an international setup. But who else is going to join him? Those are hopefully going to be the questions that start to be answered over the next few weeks. What it's going to mean for the people that have currently been there towards the end of the Eddie Jones tenure. You look at England's scrum in particular, that needs to improve. So maybe a new coach comes in there. What does he do? So in terms of getting his coaching team right, is going to be important. And actually, if you think back to the start of Eddie Jones's reign as England head coach back in, what was it, after the 2015 World Cup, heading into 2016, when he had Steve Borthwick, um, he had a, a really, really good coaching staff there. Paul Gustard was the other one before he left and went to Harlequins. I think the coaching team that Eddie Jones brought in was really, really, really good and was a big part of why England had such success in the early part of his tenure and was also another factor, I think, in why things started to unravel a little bit towards the end of his tenure. We saw the changes in the coaching team, the lack of um, consistency in terms of the voices and the coaches that were, were in that setup. So I think that's going to be really, really important for Steve Borthwick as well. Let's get us on to selection of the players, though, because it's the players that go out and do the job on the pitch. And this is going to be massive, no question about it, for England going forward. As I said before, I've seen a lot of comments on the channel which have been about selection. People asking, why is this player not being picked? Why is this player not being picked? People being selected out of position, out of form. So select in form and in position will be a start for Steve Borthwick. But I actually think it's a little more complicated than that. England need their forward pack to start getting them on the front foot again. And there's been such a focus of England being really, really physical and trying to dominate the opposition. And absolutely no doubt about it, there were moments in Eddie Jones's seven years in the job 
where England's best performances, they did exactly that. I remember them doing it to Ireland in Dublin to kick off for Six Nations. They obviously did it against New Zealand in the semi-final of the Rugby World Cup in 2019 as well. I think they are capable of doing it, but I actually don't think they've been doing it on a consistent basis. And I think the reason, and because of that, that is then the reason that the attack hasn't been able to fire at all over the last three or four years. I think a lot of things revolve around that England forward pack and getting that right is going to be really, really important and getting them front foot ball so it doesn't get spoken about a huge amount here but have England ever replaced George Cruz fully I know it's Otoje and Johnny Hill as the second rows and I think they've been a pretty good second row partnership no one can argue about Otoje not deserving to be here um, Johnny Hill I think is an excellent operator really really good in terms of mall defense and things like that but I still just wonder whether England have missed just the the size of in terms of the tight head lock side that George Cruz brought to their forward pack. And if you look at the best years of Eddie Jones's team, I think it was uh, Atoje and Cruz that were in that second row. So replacing him, or not necessarily replacing him, because that was a little while ago now, but maybe finding another second row, possibly. As I say, I actually quite like Johnny Hill, but I just wonder whether England need a little bit more muscle in that second row. Could that lead to, I mean, Launchbury's ob the obvious option there. He's been injured and also kind of in and out of selection with Eddie Jones. Does he come back in is it going to be an Ollie Chesham we saw Alex Coles and Dave Ribbons come in in the most recent autumn so that's going to be very very interesting I'm not going to go through through all the different areas of the team here in terms of selections and scrum half you know go through absolutely everything you can find some of that actually in the other videos that I've done but I think selection for Steve Borthwick will be very very interesting to see where he goes and what he does with this team I think this is one that people are going to have a lot of different opinions on as well so do drop your comments Comment down below of who you want to see come into the England team. I don't think it's as simple as saying, right, Radwan and Murley, we want them on the way wings. We want Hassel Collins coming off the bench and, and just I've seen a lot of comments like that and you still need an element of experience and the players that can truly do it at international level. And someone like Radwan, for example, I think the jury is probably still out on at the moment whether he has the all-round game enough. Anyway, let me know what you think down below in terms of uh, selection. Small point here, but I think another important one. Connect with the supporters again. Um, this was something which kind of fell apart, <clears throat> excuse me, towards the end of Eddie Jones's tenure. He was, or the team were booed off after his final game against South Africa. He just kind of said, oh, I didn't hear that, even though he was in the stadium. And there seemed to be a real apathy amongst the England fan base towards the England team. So I think finding a little bit of love again, getting people excited about this team, getting people excited to go to Twickenham again. It's a great day out, but it's a blooming expensive one as well. Ticket sales, I think, were starting to reflect the fact that the team or the fans had started to just care a little bit less about the team. So let's see. I think that's quite an important part of Steve Borthwick's job, which I think will come with winning. So I think if he focuses on the other things I've said, if he can get the team winning, that will happen again. There will be that reconnection between the fans and the team but that is an important point I don't think you can completely um, sort of discount that one uh, just finally the style of play in this England team do we want less kicking a lot of people are going to say yes there but actually you look at some of the most successful teams in the international rugby at the moment Ireland and France they kick the ball more than anyone so it's not necessarily less kicking I think it's better kicking from England they need to be better at the tactical kicking game and it's weird that they've been quite poor at it when you think of Freddie Stewart who's so good defending that side of the kicking game they haven't necessarily been that great in terms of the kicks that they've put in so I think that needs to improve I don't think it's necessarily about less although there are times I'm sure where we'd like to see them run it a bit more it's more about when they kick or how they kick and kicking in the right ways winning that tactical duel they need to fix the scrum and line out this was an area which was of particular concern against South Africa at the end of the autumn that has to be functioning it's a staple of English rugby in the past and frankly at international level if you don't have a good line out if you don't have a good scrum if your set piece isn't functioning you will not win test matches at the highest level they have to get those right I think they need to see improvement from where it's been in the last year or so um, but ultimately I think it comes back to something I touched on earlier in the video which is about quick ball. I think England haven't been getting enough quick ball recently. I think they have the players in the backs to be able to cause damage, but the attack has been so stagnant. It's been kicking all the time. It's lacked momentum. It's lacked speed. It's lacked purpose. Get front football. Get your forward pack moving forward. And I think those other issues in the game will quickly start to fix themselves. 
That's a very simplistic view of looking at it. But look, I'm not a professional coach or an analyst. That's kind of my thought on things. I think that would make a huge, huge difference to this England side. That's kind of enough from me. I've rambled on long enough. Once again, Merry Christmas to all of you. I know it's been a while since I uploaded a video, um, but glad to get back on it today. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. What is top of Steve Borthwick's to-do list as the England rugby head coach? Love to hear from you. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I'll see you in the next one.